So starting up, uh, we've got Pia talking about remixing. Um, and then at the moment I have no lightning talks, so we may not do lightning talks at 10 past 4, but we'll see how we go. Um, and then at uh, 4.40 we've got the slide guitar construction workshop starting up. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Pia to talk about remixing. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, so for starters, this doesn't go through up there, that just goes into the microphone, so I'll just yell and at the same time uh, pretend like I'm talking into the speakers. Um, I guess uh, what I wanted to do, um, how many people here do, how many people who make music at all? All right, how many of you guys do remixing of, um, of music? Yeah, cool, all right. What I wanted to do was, um, this is one of my little side passions. This is one of the things that actually keeps me sane, <laughs> is um, basically my music, my motorbike, and my martial arts. Um, so I've been known to get home at 11 and just be utterly you know, frustrated with the world and life and everything, and to just write, remix, record, publish, not necessarily in that order, a song and put it on SoundCloud. And that's very satisfying, because sometimes when you try and, you know, fix the world, it's very slow moving. Um, so what I thought I'd do today was give you a bit of an idea of the process that I go through in remixing um, a song, um, and keeping in mind that there's two types of stuff. I mean, I do a lot of uh, original music, um, both uh, electronic and... Um, instrumental stuff, uh, guitar and, and vocals and such. But I'm going to focus today specifically on remixing remixing um, Creative Commons content uh, and remixing um, with uh, collaborators that I work with overseas now. Um, and I'm very excited to say that I actually, um, I've, I've got about 30 odd songs on. 1,000 listens just a week ago or so, so I'm very excited. Very, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, they, yeah, I mean, one of those songs has got like, you know, 1,200 of those listens, so it's, you know, it's not actually that impressive. Anyway, but, um, so, the process of remixing, I guess, was what I was going to start with and just give you a rough idea of how that works. And then I'm going to take you through two examples of, um, I guess, the process that I went through. Then I'm going to talk through the tools that I use and then I'm going to talk through some of the hardware that I use and where I'm sort of trying to escalate to with, um, with what I'm doing with music, if that's okay. Um, and I, it's also worth noting I've had an average of four hours sleep for the last six weeks, <laughs> so I'm a little out of it. Um, so in the first case, finding tunes that are awesome. Um, I'm an industrial music fan. Uh, I listen to lots of different types of music, but I love good industrial. And um, Nine Inch Nails Ghost was an album that came out where a quarter of the album was actually Creative Commons license. And they're all instrumentals, and some of them are very, very pretty. Some of them are very, very crunchy, um, sort of heavier sort of stuff, and, there's, and everything in between. So what I found was a, um, a, I'm in the process at the moment of making remixing the entire Ghosts um, album to a vocal Ghosts album, basically, which is kind of fun. So I'll come back to that in a second. But the first thing is, you, you know, finding cool tunes. SoundCloud's also been really good for that, for just finding amazing instrumentals or snippets of instrumentals that give me snippets of tunes that then I can mash up and put together with other tunes. Um, so looking at the suitability, because there might be an amazing song, but the suitability for what you're trying to do with it may not map, the suitability for your voice may not map in my case or, or whatever. And looking at the mashability and making sure you've got permissions. Um, so I pick a tune. Then what I do is I take the tune and I identify what are the musical ideas in this tune. Because sometimes there'll only be like one musical idea and so it'll get pretty old pretty quickly unless you do interesting things to sort of um, liven it up or unless you put in a whole different tune. One of the things, the songs I'm going to show you, uh, I found uh, three songs that each only had like one good idea but the ideas merged together really well and so I was able to actually mash them together into a single song quite nicely. Um, then you sort, So you, you determine the musical ideas and determine what's going on, then you can start cutting it up and start you know, basically doing a, a, um, a hack job of, you know, putting it together in the order that you're trying to create, um, which takes a combination of uh, doing beat um, uh, matching. So if one song's, you know, running at 120 and the other one's running at 140, you need to actually match them together in the first instance so you can start to put them together. Does everyone know what I mean by that? Yep, cool, <laughs> roughly. Um, so you beat match and there's some fantastic, um, and all of the songs I've done, I've done using only free software, it's worth mentioning. So a lot of people sort of go on about, and people have pointed me to, you know, things like, I, I used to use Cakewalk back in my youth, <laughs> in my misspent youth at school, um, and I've used um, uh, Pro Logic and a few other of those kind of tools when I was about 18 or 19, which were, were quite nice, but everything I need to do, I've been able to do really well um, with the free software tools, and... Um, and I'm learning a lot about how sound works as well. So I'm actually started buying books about um, the, the physics of sound, which has been really, really fun to sort of start getting my head around. You know, I can hear a particular thing. I know 
intuitively what I need to do to make it sound better, but I, I don't know what it means. I, I, so I'm trying to learn some of those physics of sounds at the moment, which will hopefully improve the outcomes I'm getting. Um, and then sometimes, so you do your beat matching, you, you create like a new instrumental structure. Um, if you need new material, sometimes I'll be listening to something, I'm like, oh, it needs a tone or it needs a, a, a sound or it needs the beat, which is actually a really cool beat, but I need to just mash it up. I need to like um, mix it up a little bit to give it a little bit more interesting. Or in one case, which I'll show you, I had a particular song that a, a friend of mine in the States that I do a lot of, um, we do a lot of collaboration stuff um, together with. He had this one song which, as, as I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh, this sounds like a revolutionary song. It sounds like a, a call for action, or, you know, a, a pushing back on society kind of song. So what I did was I sampled a whole bunch of guns um, and used that as my rhythms. So I'll, I'll show you that in a second. But I basically uh, created a whole uh, new rhythm um, element using the sounds of shotguns and, and cocks, uh, cocking of um, shotguns and loading and, and pistols and snipers. And it was really cool, actually, um, you know, because we like gun culture. No, we don't. Um, but it was, um, but it was because it mapped the song. So sometimes it's a matter of just listening to a song and, and feeling, what does this do for me? And then sort of trying to map it to something else. Another part of what I'm trying to do is um, make an entire album of songs that I, I guess are inspired by William Gibson stuff. So, um, the, so it sort of it combines with some of the ghost work I'm doing as well. But um, so when I'm listening to a song, sometimes it'll be like, okay, does that remind me of a story of a particular Gibson character or a particular you know thing that I find interesting? Anyway. So I come up with an instrumental. So I now have a remixed instrumental and I've got some ideas around how the melody is going to work. I start to put together some basic melodies and then I start to play with a concept and take that concept and, um, and flesh out lyrics. Sometimes I'll write the lyrics for an entire song in five minutes. Sometimes it'll stretch out over a few weeks as I come up with new little snatches of ideas. Sometimes the song is driven by lyrics. Sometimes it's driven by a concept. Sometimes it's driven by the rhythm. You know, depends on the song, but I'll come back to that. I practice and I tweak the vocals over maybe a week or two, usually, unless I'm 11 o'clock at night and really frustrated. Um, I actually went to a Billy Bragg concert uh, about a month ago and I got home so riled up that I, I wrote from scratch, um, recorded and, um, and put online a song about you know the apathy of the masses <laughs> on my guitar um, within about an hour. That was um, kind of funny. So, um, so occasionally I'll do that. Um, then, depending on what I've done, if I already have the relationship with the artist, I usually tell them what I'm doing in advance and ask them if that's cool, and they're usually very cool about it. I'll make sure I bounce it off them after I've sort of recorded and mixed my vocals in and get their perspective. Sometimes I'll just be like, that's awesome, just put it up, that's fantastic. Sometimes they'll want to go and hack on it. Sometimes they'll be like, wow, I hate it. Uh, and that's okay as well. So, you know, sometimes I, I've got more songs that I haven't put online because they haven't enjoyed it and it's completely their call. And then I publish. So. I'm just going to walk you through that process with a couple of things. Um, I've got oh, this, is, drink. this is my new Ubuntu Air. <laughs> um, it's um, working really much better now that I don't have any Mac software on it. So I'm just going to show you. Um, so Failing Ghost was a particular song uh, example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the song and then I'm going to call out over the song about what I'm hearing and what I took from it. So I'm going to give you the very, very, very rapid process <laughs> about how I did the remixing of this particular song and then I'll show you the end result. Uh, does that sound okay? Yeah, cool. Uh, hopefully this is what you were interested in because <laughs> it's what, yeah. All right, so this is the first one. Oh, no, I don't want to do it that way. Stop it. Stop it all. Junk. I've already got it preloaded somewhere else, so let's go and do that. Okay. So. So, you know, there's not much in the intro. And it's got this kind of... I really like this rhythm. The first time I heard it, I'm like, whoa. Beautiful piano. He always does beautiful piano stuff. They're only two minutes each, so just bear with me. So I'm hearing a riff. I'm hearing a cool rhythm that I like. And then it just keeps repeating. But you can hear that it's got to go somewhere. And you can hear that he starts to take it somewhere with a bit of extra sounds, which is really pretty. Very nice. All building up to something. But it's starting to bore me now.
So for me, it's just gone on too long now. So there's, but there's snippets I can take. I can hear a riff, I can hear a rhythm. Both of those I like. It's starting to lose me though. So obviously I can see that I can use that, but I don't know how I'm going to use it yet. There's another tone under there that I like. And then it stops. Okay. Now what? Okay, it's, it's, it's sort of petering off, but there's still supposedly another, like, 40 seconds of the song. 50 seconds of the song. You know, ambience is good and all, but now what? You're getting an insight to my brain, by the way. I apologize profusely. I kind of like that, sort of building back up. Love, love how it flicks into the clear beat. So how am I going to use that? And then we're back into it. And basically just continues from there. So I'll stop that for a sec. No, I'll leave it. It's only number 37. So you can hear there's a there's a there's basically just one riff, right? And there's one rhythm. Um, the the ambiance kind of sounds a bit in the middle where there was no rhythm and there was no riff. Sort of gives you an idea about what you can do and how you can break it up, maybe, and how you can create space. One of the the things about music is creating uh, contrasts so that you can actually appreciate the different aspects of the song. Um, so I'm going to show you another song which is from the same album. And as soon as I heard it, even though it's a different tempo. Um, and quite a different song in a lot of ways. I could, I could, f I could hear how it would fit. So just, I'll just play it for you and see what you think. No, not that one. No, oh, yes, no, that one. Ah, not that one. That's other. All right, this one. So I'll turn this one down a bit because it does this a lot. <laughs> but you can hear the guitar sound is a really nice riff, but then it's got all this crunchy crunchy, which is not quite what I want for this song. But it goes in and out of the crunchy bit. The rhythm's a bit boring, but I still want the guitar, but the guitar's intermingled with other stuff that I don't really want. But yeah, and then we get very loud again. So I'm just gonna take it back down again. He likes his melodramatic guitars. Anyone else here a Nine Inch Nails fan? Yeah, okay, cool. But again, it's just the one riff. So there's only one musical idea here that's really useful to me, and I haven't yet found it in a, in a, um, I haven't yet found it in a clean format that I can reuse. There it is, just with the rhythm. Still dirty, not all that useful. By this stage, I'm starting to think I could just play the riff <laughs> and just record myself playing it, just put that over the top of it. So, uh, yeah. Voila. The thing I've been waiting for for a minute 47. The clear riff. Still too slow, but it maps. Maps really nicely. So, all right, cool. So I have that. Oh, stop it. All right. So I've got two, I've got, I've got two musical ideas and a really cool rhythm that I like, right? Um, what I'm going to do now is just jump straight to there, there was actually another song that, um, there's another ghost that I use, uh, which has basically just got a lot of, it's just a lot of ambient sound that, I, that I'm not going to bother playing for you because it's long and annoying. Um, but I'm going to show you, so I, I mapped it in together to make an instrumental version, which I won't play because it ruins the surprise. Um, but I'll just show you the end result now. So the end result was after I'd put to mash those things together, created a structure I like, and I mean, you know, I tend to, you know, I tend to be reason, you want your structure to be um, um, obvious enough that people can connect with it, 
but not too obvious. You don't want to just go chorus, verse, chorus, verse necessarily all the time. You want to sort of shake it up a little bit sometimes, but if it's too alien, then it becomes prog rock that people probably won't listen to um, <laughs> or enjoy. So that's just my perspective. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the end result now, and um, I, 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 uh, I think you'll like it. It's only two minutes 58, so you'll just have to listen. <laughs> So, you can see I played with a bunch of different concepts. Uh, you could see that I sped up the, um, the guitar riff from the second songs and mapped it to basically be the verse, effectively. Uh, you can see that I played with a lot of white space at least a couple of times during the song. The difference between the first and the second, let's call them a chorus, I actually forget, um, it was basically that the second one had um, sounds underneath it that gave it more depth, but it was effectively identical um, uh, otherwise than that. So you need to have differentiation between your choruses. If they just sound the same, then you know they just sound the same. You always got to figure out um, how to escalate your song and where to give it a peak and where to actually let it fade away again. Um, but uh, I guess the next thing to do is to go through the tools. Any questions thus far? Okay. Um, do we have internet yet? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, no, it's an air. <laughs> They're like too cool for cables and stuff. Um, that's okay. All right. Okay. So um, what I'll do then is I'll just show you the tools. Now I stupidly, well, my my. Oi. Okay, cool. I um, the how am I supposed to gesticulate if I'm holding something? Um, the yeah. I don't know how. Duh. Oh, okay. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, basically, I stupidly 
because my plane was running an hour and a half late and I only got here 20 minutes before my talk, uh, I didn't get the chance to switch laptops to the one that I've actually been using to do all the music. I've only switched to this laptop about four days ago. There is internet. Well, I've, it's okay, I've got this plugged in now, <laughs> I think. It seems to be trying to get an IP address, I think. Um, so what I'm going to really actually have to do is actually talk to you a little bit about some of the tools and show you probably a couple of them, but um, I can't demonstrate them because I haven't installed all the plugins and I haven't had wireless yet here to actually install them. So um, I do pretty much all my remixing in Arda, um, which I actually find particularly awesome. Um, uh, has anyone here used Arda? A few people? Not really many. Okay, I actually find it really awesome. Um, because it doesn't have any of my plugins at the moment, yeah, whatever, because it's not going to work properly anyway, because I don't have any of my plugins. And if I play it right now, it will just hurt your ears. In fact, this isn't a good one because it's not particularly mixed. All right, let's get another one. But no, I'll just show you. So, I mean, as a tool, it's, it's pretty handy. You can um, pull in. Ah, oh, yeah, good point. Hold on. Thank you. I mean, you can pull in lots and lots and lots and lots of tracks. Uh, you can play with your tempo, play with your range, play with a whole bunch of stuff. It's, um, I'm not going to go into actually doing editing and stuff, but I find it just... It, it's weird, actually. Once I started doing this stuff a fair bit, um, I actually found that I actually rely on my eyes just as much as I rely on my ears. When I'm watching it, um, I can actually line up the, the beats just as well visually as I can, um, even better visually than I can with hearing. Quite often, I'll actually line it up just by hearing and um, and I'll go back and listen to it, and it'll be and the vocals in particular will be you know out by a very 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 tiny fraction because a beat on a very sharp instrument it will you know will be here, but the the actual beat on the sound that you're making when you talk you've already sort of done the to to the, the intro sound to get to the point where you've made the sound so you can't line it up perfectly that way you have to sort of put the vocals a little bit ahead like most of the time I find so visually it has been a lot better than. Um, trying to deal with it with um, just with sound. Um, obviously with the mixer and such, you can then start playing around with um, where you put the, uh, with all the different uh, plugins and stuff that they have. And they have some fantastic plugins. This isn't showing any mine because I'm not installed right now. Um, but where you put the sound as well, like uh, I've got a couple of songs where I'll have a sound just slightly in the background as the background sounds, but very much in the foreground um, for the, the <coughs> vocals. Oh, my wide neck work clip has gone off now. This is so sucky. Um, okay, yeah, maybe it was a mistake to get this computer. <laughs> All right, um, but Arda is the main tool I actually use for, for hacking stuff, and there's lots of fantastic tools that I... Lots of fantastic tools that I um, should use and plugins I should use, and actually Martin's probably better at making sounds better than me. But a um, couple of the other ones. Hydrogen? Has anyone used hydrogen? Cool, okay. Hydrogen is fantastic. It's basically a drum machine, um, but it makes really, really cool drums. What was the one we used hydrogen for? Did we use greed? Yeah, greed was hydrogen. Let me let me show you a song. Dink -dink -dink. Um, so we had a couple of songs where we um, uh, where we recorded all the instruments, and then we went back and um, and basically uh, did the drums just with hydrogen, and they sound really good. I'll show you. Give me one second. Which one? Yeah, that one will do. You dress so pretty. It's worth mentioning this is actually about lobbyists. <laughs> but it's a fairly it's a fairly sort of organic sounding drum sound, isn't it? It's it's kind of basic and it's kind of cool. Um, and what I find because I'm very um, I'm a very array driven person. Um, I'll, sorry, I'll just explain what that means. When I was a kid, I was quite dyslexic, and so I had trouble with backwards and forwards and upside down with all my letters. So I built four arrays, forwards, backwards, forwards, upside down, backwards, upside down, and I can switch into any one of those and write left or, handed, uh, left or right handed in any one of those four arrays. Um, that's how I dealt with dyslexia. I'm a little bit odd. <laughs> um, 
but it's the same with, um, with hydrogen. You can actually create lots of arrays of drums and then switch them on and off as you want. Now, some people actually create, you know, a drum track for this part of the song. I just create lots of layers and then turn them off and on as I go. It's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, so um, hydrogen is a really great little um, tool for doing drum stuff. There's one tool called, I think it's called Jammin. It's on my other computer. Um, and there's another one called Mix. Basically, any tools that, software tools that DJs use to be able to take a song and then meld into the second song is going to help you do beat matching. Uh, most of them are really good at actually picking up the beat um, automatically and automatically and so you can actually say okay well that song is 140 that song's 120 so basically with a small amount of math I can decrease it by that much space and it'll compress it so that now they're the same rhythm or the, the same speed um, and if because some of the tools just don't pick it up because some songs are just too weird to figure out the the beat automatically but they'll usually have like a tap button and so <laughs> you know you'll listen to the song and you'll be like tap and through the laws of averages, obviously, the more you go, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, but um, not laws of averages. Anyway, um, but um, it, it helps you actually figure out what it is by actually pressing go, go, go. So that's actually helpful as well. But beat matching is really important. So I use those for that. Obviously, FFmpeg and Lame for just doing transcoding stuff. Um, I don't publish. Um, like, I generally put just sort of um, OGs or MP3s or whatever online um, and, um, and not put waves on, uh, WAVs online because even though it's a better quality sound, um, it was obviously a lot, lot, lot bigger. Um, so, you know, I try to not put that on people. Um, who here? Sorry? Slack. I could, it's the same. It's still huge. <laughs> no, it did. Okay. You're right. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, I don't do Wave or Flack <laughs> because they're both big. Um, but um, uh, has anyone ever seen a Zoom? Yeah. I've got Sylvia's Zoom. Yeah, you saw it before I stole it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, so I've actually um, borrowed Sylvia Zoom, <laughs> um, and I, it's a it's a two D or something. I'll, I'll put up a blog post with all the details. But it's really cool because it's got these two um, um, uh, it's got two inputs. It's got a microphone at the top, but it's got two inputs that I can plug in um, full microphones. I can plug in a guitar jack. I can plug in pretty much anything you can imagine, and um, and it, it takes just a really really good quality sound. And then I do all of my um, hard, uh, I do all of my, I guess, effects and compression all the stuff with software at the moment. Um, however, I'm going to completely change that as of um, uh, in a few weeks when I have some time. Um, but basically I've bought um, like a mixer, a Xenix uh, X1204 um, mixer, uh, so I can actually start doing all my compression in hardware. Because what I found is that the um, results of software just compression are just nowhere near as good as we can get with hardware compression. So I'm basically upping the ante and setting up a proper studio uh, sometime over the next month or so um, and going to experiment with trying to get really good quality sound out of that because it just, it just saves, you just don't get the same quality I think in, in software compression and software um, resin, um, re reverb and all that kind of stuff. Of course the uh, the problem with doing it that way is that once it's recorded in that way you can't do anything with it so in some ways doing it raw is better. Yeah. Probably. Probably because I've also been on a really shitty little laptop <laughs> that can't deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and my computer crashed. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's also a good point. Um, I could now that I've got a slightly faster computer than the um, EPC that I've had for the last five years, I could probably go back to trying software um, software compression as well. But the um, I guess the other thing is that just it just is more time like it's more time efficient as well to have a good set up in hardware that I can just record and I know it's going to sound how I want it to sound even if I'm just doing the compression um, with the um, mixer and maybe a couple of other little things um, like limit limiting and stuff so I don't you know well and a few other things um, but not do anything like reverb or any other kind of effects apart from doing that stuff in software maybe that's the way I end up going um, okay so um, do you want me to show you a couple of other examples of how I do stuff yeah all right Oh uh, yeah. Um, all right. Let me let me open up Arda and show you something. Hopefully, slightly more interesting than what I just showed you. And while actually while I'm opening up Arda, I'll show you a cute little. Um, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna again I'm just gonna play a song, but I'm only gonna I'm only gonna play parts of this song. This is a collaboration I did with um, with my mate in the states, and he. Um, had this beautiful, uh, like I really, really, really enjoyed this particular instrumental, and um, I thought it didn't need anything. And then one day I, I just 
came up with something I needed to do with it. So then I did a remix with vocals, which didn't really change his structure or really anything pretty much. I just put vocals over it um, and stripped out a couple of things um, and sent it to him and he loved it. And he's like, oh, I could make this more rock. And he came back and he put like electric guitars over the top of it and everything. It sounded like quite different, but really awesome. So just, just, I just want to show you this. Hello, microphone. Um, I can't gesticulate. Okay, um, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of this song, which I thought was cool. It's like, it's so rock. Whoa. guy comes out with the coolest riffs um, and you know you just want to go to the street with a placard or something um, equally stressful and 
and life world changing. Anyway, so um, guns. I started to play with guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this one. I won't play the whole one, it's a little bit heavy. Um, but, um, but that was a lot of fun. Um, all right, let's see what else I can show you rather than talk. Um, <laughs> The, I'll just show you hydrogen briefly because hydrogen is actually really cool. Don't show me this message anymore because it's a development version of hydrogen. I will definitely help you report bugs and suggestions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hydrogen. It's really simple. You've basically got, um, here are all of the potential notes. You set what um, rhythm and tempo you want, and then you start marking stuff in. Boonk, 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 boonk. That's not going to work very well. Hold on. I'm a little bit. Yeah, this is where, you <laughs> and this is where the more anal retentive of us <laughs> are going to have a lot of fun because you know you start making just pretty patterns for the hell of it and see how it sounds. Um, but um, you sort of do that. Oh no, because I don't have a. Oh, yeah, because I don't have any of the sound stuff set. But you can start to play with different. <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the recording. I should have left it down there. Um, yeah, I need to go and fix my computer. But you can, it's got a lot of sounds that are actually quite good organic sounds. And you can import, there's like loads of libraries of stuff. So you'll just set up patterns. And then what, what, um, I, what I normally do is I'll record a particular pattern and you just pump it out um, to a WAV file or whatever. And then I import that WAV file into ARDA and then just cut it up and, and hack on it how I want. That's what I usually do. So, um, but this, it's a very, very simple tool to use. You've got a, a mixer for what that's worth um, of how you can make the different sounds sound good. But it, there's heaps of um, different rhythms and stuff you can build in. I think, from memory, you can also actually record all your own sounds and actually play with them as well. Okay, other cool tools that I don't actually use on a daily basis but are worth checking out. Um, has anything happened with Sweep, like, in the last five years? Why Oh, cool. Okay. Um, Sweep is actually kind of cute, but it's not ma being maintained currently. <laughs> but Sweep is a tool. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Sweep is a tool that um, you have a library of sounds. It's actually worth playing with anyway. It's got a library of sounds. Uh, you, you just need a. No, I'll get to that. You've got a library of sounds, and you load up a whole bunch of sounds. And then you can just. Um, and then you associate each sound with like a, a keystroke, and then you basically live. DJ those sounds. So then you can not only sort of bring up sounds and have them playing, have them, have them looping, have them do whatever you want, um, and, and basically be uh, creating music live. It's got a little thing called Scrubby, which is a, you know, a little, like, like a, on a record, so you can sort of chicka 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 and sort of go backwards and forwards and ups down. Uh, you can push sounds reverse or forward, or like it's so much fun. Um, I actually went to the um, uh, comrade's house who, who wrote it in the first instance. Um, years ago now, like oh, eight, nine, I don't know, many years ago. And, um, and he's like, hey, check out this scrubby thing. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I sat down and started playing with it. And I stood back up about two hours later, <laughs> not realizing two hours had gone past and everyone at the party, A, hadn't noticed me sitting in the corner, um, and B, were just like, where's the music gone? <laughs> I hadn't realized it had actually been pumping into the entire party. Um, but um, but it, is, so it's, it is really fun and really addictive and really cool to just sort of get sounds going and stuff. So that was really fun. Um, I, think, I think that's about all I've got. Let me just see if I've got anything else to show you, which is kind of fun. Um, doo -doo -doo. No, not really. And I don't have internet either. So um, almost... Yeah, um, well, thank you, yeah, so any questions? <laughs> Come on, none? I've rambled incoherently for like 40 minutes. What microphone are you using? Sorry? What microphone are you using? What microphone? microphone? Oh, I have a nice one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I've actually been <laughs> You know what, for pretty much all the songs, because I only got my new gear um, a couple of songs ago, so for most of my songs, and certainly some of the ones that have 
that sound best because I'm still getting used to the new kit, um, were all done on the Zoom, weirdly. Um, and it was done on the Zoom. Um, a couple of them I would just like sing at it and then it would freak out and I'd get like lots of peaking and all kinds of stuff going, lots of clipping. And, um, but then I started um, putting some stuff in front. Also, a lot of the recording I did with um, actually at Martin's studio as well. He's got some really cool kit that you've got all written up somewhere, right? Somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was some stuff that was recorded there. There was a bunch of stuff that I actually recorded on the Zoom. And um, you can buy those professional um, screen things that are basically, you know, sorry? There's a, there's a technical term, whatever. Um, a dead cat. What, in front of your face? <laughs> Wake up! Oh, no, no, it's not one of those ones that sits here. It's, it's, it's like this thing that sits, it's like a round thing. It's, yeah, whatever. Um, or you can just get a pair of stockings, which I'm sure all of you have in you know, great demand, <laughs> great supply, and just put it over like a, um, a um, coat hanger, thank you, and put that in front of it. So that works just as well, in my opinion. Um, but I did that with that. But what I'll do is I'll write up all the gear that I've got, because I've actually um, got some really nice stuff that works really well. Um, and um, I'll put that up in a blog post after Tim Berners-Lee goes home. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God. Um, um, all the samples. So, so a lot of the. So, I mean, there's ghosts, obviously. Um, there's um, uh, a lot of stuff from SoundCloud um, that I've gone to, and it's either Creative Commons to start, or it's not Creative Commons. And I've written to the person and said, "Hey, I really like your instrumental. Can I use it?" And they're like, "Yeah, totally." So, um, in in pretty much every case, they've been very excited to see what I do with it. So that's been really cool. Uh, SoundCloud, just for what it's worth, is a great community, like fantastic stuff going on there, there's like fantastic music happening, there's a lot of sharing, a lot of groups, it's actually really worth getting onto if you want to get into this stuff. Um, and, it's, and even though they change the interface and I hate the new interface, but, um, but generally the stats on it are actually really good. Um, oh really? Can you punch them? <laughs> For me? I'll fly to Europe. <laughs> um, but um, the... But a lot of the other stuff, like there's, there's like so much just free stuff. Like all my gun samples were um, uh, free public domain samples from, from the US, as you, you know, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, at one point though, I actually went to, um, I had a song years and years ago that I actually took all the gun battle from the Matrix and actually cut it up and used that as a rhythm years ago. But unfortunately when I transferred computers sometime, it got completely lost, which was really annoying. Uh, but I, I don't tend to, um, to use copyrighted materials, you know, um, copy, you know, restricted materials anymore because, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, but yeah, all the artists and stuff, I basically work on the principle that if they give me permission, they must have sorted out the copyright. So if they've stuffed up, well, I got plausible deniability. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, nice. The guy was actually going out to record some horses galloping around the track, but he didn't get past his front gate. <laughs> the next door neighbour's car wouldn't mm. start, and he recorded that and said he that. Well, <laughs> and this for me is the definite. I mean, a lot of people hear the term industrial and they assume it's like a, you know, all just big crazy noise that is awful to hear. And I'm sure that some of the things that you just heard some people here would not like for the same reason. Yeah? The band the Their albums come to this entire second LP of Just Campbell, so you can use Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's they, all. They were famous for yeah, uh, sampling themselves yep. <laughs> four times and having four gold records with it and making a million quid out of it. That's cool. And then going and making a film about them and earning a million quid. Yeah, yeah. Dave? <laughs> and also, there's a song about Apple's uh, that they sampled without permission. Yeah. They had to destroy all of them, so they made a film of themselves <laughs> outside of <laughs> Oh, fantastic. They bought the one remaining copy second hand, and once it was second hand, the legal agreement didn't apply to them, so they resold that one. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Dave? Where do we find your stuff here? Oh, um. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you haven't been like just totally freaked out by now, um, soundcloud.com slash Grebo, which is my nick dash one, because some bastard took the other Grebo. G R E E B O dash one, number one. Like this. It, it is, yes. I thought you had it without the dash. No, bastard. 
<laughs> I'm not calling you a bastard. Just <laughs> <laughs> sorry if that came across. So it's like this. Like just going and killing them. No. Um. <laughs> there we go. If you. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that because it might tip them off, and you know I don't want any public record that I'm planning any of these things. Obviously. Um. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I thought this was here for the microphone for the speakers that we can't hear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's kind of funny. I, uh, I should probably record. Yeah, anyway, um, there you go. You can see it there. SoundCloud.com slash Gribo dash one. And um, uh, I'd I mean, I'd love feedback. I mean, there's some stuff there that's not bad. There's some stuff that I think is pretty good. Um, and I'm just going to keep doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, more stuff. And I'm hoping to get the rest of the Ghosts album done by the end of this year. And um, William Gibson, I've got a song. Oh, okay. Because you're geeks, I'm going to show you just one more song, and then I'm going to stop. Okay, the song I'm going to show you. Who's a Gibson fan? The rest of you for shame. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's, anyway, I'm not going to defend Gibson to you all because you bloody bugger off. Um, this song is, of course, a classic tale of a, of, a, um, of a cybernetic dolphin who's come back from the war <laughs> and is very sad and living in a, in a, in a, in a, Jones! It's about Jones, yes. And he's living in a, um, in a circus tank and basically kids are just come to see him. So the, the concept here, the premise which I find fascinating is that, um, you know, they're obviously in, well, it, the premise is that they're intelligent animals and they've been um, geared up with, you know, metal and with drugs and all the rest of it so that they can become bomb diffusers in like the next big war. So the dolphins are going through diffusing all the bombs and a um, whole bunch of them are dying. Um, this one survives, comes back and basically is a junkie. Um, but the, the kit that he's got installed in his head means that he can sniff basically anyone. Any, anyone he'd done network packet analysis sniffing stuff? Yeah, a few of you, you're not going to put your hands up though, are you? Um, I have, and uh, you know, and I had a lot of fun playing around with that purely for white hat reasons, of course. Um, but, um, you know, so the idea is that he can sniff anything. Uh, so you can bring any device to him and he can sniff it because of the very, very, very high tech gear in his head. I don't know why I went down the full story, but the point is um, this story is about him, so you know. A little bit more crunchy because you know it's futuristic Gibson land. And then I'll stop, I promise. That's all I'm going to put you through. But yeah, that was kind of fun. So th there's a lot of different songs. There's a lot of different things. And when you, if you go to my channel and you see the song called Torture Fetish, don't judge me. Um, there's a lot of songs that don't represent real life. You know what I mean? Like there's, there, I just, I play with concepts. They aren't necessarily literal. Okay. <laughs> so just, just take it with a grain of salt, please. Um, so I'll stop there. Um, the last thing I'll say is that um, the other piece of gear that I completely forgot to mention here is I've actually got a. Oh crap. Um, one of those things you hit it and then it records a bit and you hit it again and then it loops the thingy. Sequen no, uh, sequencer or a looper? Looper, live looper, yeah, yeah. Um, and just as a point of reference, if someone tries to sell you a looper and they say, oh, these valve loopers have such a great sound, you should totally get one of those. Um, a, they're correct, they do have a great sound. B, there's a physics limitation on a valve looper of like a certain amount of seconds, which is not nearly enough to do anything particularly useful beyond a couple of seconds. Um, so I went back and I got a digital one, um, and um, and it's great because now what I'm doing is I'm I'm starting to do a bunch of um, steampunk gigs actually. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a bunch of weird sort of percussion instruments, including um, a I want to get an old motorbike um, 
petrol tank. Uh, obviously, I need to get it clean probably before I start hitting it with sticks. Um, but um, I'm going to have that and a few other, you know, percussion sounds. Use the looping machine to create a very, you know, um, sort of metallic industrial kind of sound, and then play guitar over the top. And I've discovered, as Jimmy Page discovered well before I did, and probably did slightly better than I do, um, that one of the cool things you can do with a guitar is actually bow it with a violin bow quite effectively and get an amazing sound. So basically, for my steampunk gigs, I've started getting these percussions with a looper and playing a guitar with um, a violin bow and with um, a mallet as well. You hit the strings, it's a pretty cool sound. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, it's not a soft mallet though. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a muted kind of... Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Tony, what was it? Tony Levin. Tony King Crimson, Peter Gabriel. King Crimson, Peter Gabriel. Um, dude did cool stuff, just for the people who are listening on the recording who are probably none by now. Um, but um, the, because uh, I got a little mallet, so I hit it with a mallet side, but I also hit it with a stick. So hitting all the strings with a stick. And if you're wondering how you bow a flat plane of strings, the answer is you bow all of them. You need a lot of r rosin on your um, uh, violin bow if you're going to do it. But the other thing is you can actually bow the, um, the top string quite effectively as well and actually get a very uh, high-pitched, quite pretty sound. If you're really good and I'm not yet, you can actually bow the bass string, but it's very hard to do and kind of annoying. Um, and then when you go to play it normally afterwards, of course, you've got all the rosin, so your fingers get sticky, so you've got to clean it in between. But apart from that, it's pretty cool. I'll stop now. Thank you all so much. I hope that was useful. <laughs>